Kia ora vatos, thanks again for tuning in to yet another video of Infamous coming at you live from the West Coast yet again, San Jose, California. So we are doing this voiceover for this video. I am going to be releasing a whole playlist uh, on the FXRT audio, so just go on the channel, look for the playlist, FXRT audio playlist, and you'll have all of these videos in their full detail step by step so you guys can check it out if you need help cutting out uh, the speakers the speaker holes on the fxrt fairing you guys can look for that video if you guys need uh, a walk uh, a how to on the stereo on the speaker pods you guys can check out that video i understand these videos all together in their entirety can be you know maybe an hour two hours so i figured you know what i'm going to do i'm just going to split them up make them easier to find on the interweb if you guys need you know full details on step by step on specific parts of this of this install you guys can like i said check them out on the playlist so let's just go ahead and get into it just a few details voiceover wise just to make the video a little bit shorter um you guys can see what i went ahead and uh and i went ahead and i applied some masking tape and why am i doing that it just makes it easier for me to see my uh, my templates. So you guys can check it out right here. If you guys have directional speakers, make sure that you're holding them up upright. Uh, I also made notes in the video of when I am making these holes. You guys wanna make sure that uh, they're even. Remember the bike is on a kickstand. So, uh, you know, try to factor that in because once you take it off the kickstand you'll realize that your speakers are lopsided so of course i am using a countersink screw it's just a little bit easier in managing the uh the, the bit that way it's not kicking all the way around and what i'm doing here i'm just trying to make sure there's enough there's sufficient room for my blade to kind of fit in there and start cutting that stuff out so you can also see that i am pretty much maybe about one eighth away from my template from my markings so you can see that so the reason why i'm doing that uh is just to kind of keep it clean so i could go back later which you will see later in the video where i go back with a with a uh, dremel sort of tool and just clean that up and then get it to my template as close as possible so this is just kind of a of a safe way to do it you guys can see that the cut's really ugly you can see it's all lopsided not completely uh, as perfect as it should be like in a circle wise you can see that um, that you know it, it looks kind of bad because of course the blade is from Harbor Freight the tool itself is also from Harbor Freight and it was just you know it was tough cutting uh, this fiberglass because it's super thick and the blades were going out so you could also see of course when I go back to clean it up I match up my marking with the actual hole and it looks 50 times better so this is typically how you should cut stuff up and like i said this is just a safe way to do it so you're not cutting too much material and then of course you could always go back and hold the speaker in place and see where you could probably tweak or remove a little bit more uh because like i mentioned it's always easy to remove it but it's not as easy putting it back on all right so you got to measure three times four times and cut once and this is the way to do it so you can see all the dust that's going up of course a lot of fiberglass this stuff you do not want to breathe in so make sure you wear a respirator a mask a, you know it's just something that's going to filter out all those little micro shavings of fiberglass you do not want to breathe this stuff in it's not that good for you all right so i'm just showing you guys right here on uh, the placement of the speaker you can also see that i scratched uh my paint job because i I wasn't expecting the blade to kick up as it did. So you can see where it's white, I scratched it with uh, the the uh, the air saw. So if you wanna completely cover up your fairing with the blue tape, cause I, that wasn't the only spot, it was just the blue tape protected. The masking tape protected most of the scratches. So here I'm just gonna walk you guys through the wiring uh, in camera. Like I said, these videos can be pretty long and uh, I'm gonna try to see if I could just shorten it up. All right, so we went ahead and uh, fed all the wires. You guys can see where they're at, they're at the top. I already have a ton of wires right here. I, I don't think I could fit anything else. 
but uh, looking at the fuel tank, how it sits, where it sits, and I've had some other wires here. You can see these wires right here. I've had them here for years, so the tank does not pinch any of these wires. So I decided, you know what, I'm going to just put my wires here so you guys can see the zip ties. There's, not, I mean, they're not tight, all right? They're just there to hold it in place while I install the fuel tank. And of course to prevent them from you know coming down so another thing that I went ahead and I did was I removed this little plate all right pretty simple pretty straightforward it's just these two bolts and then this one right over here Allen Torx or star whatever you want to call these uh, I went ahead and I pulled this off fed my wires through you can see right here and of course I also went ahead and added my power vision cable as well so that runs through there and then you can see where it kind of comes out and then of course this is the power vision and this one goes along down right over here so in case you're wondering of course you could fish line fish tape these wires through kind of like what you guys probably saw on my lp6 install uh, that one's through the through the back or the neck of the the frame comes out through here but man this is just I, I don't think I could fit any more cables through here so I'm just gonna leave them up here this is uh, the wire for my uh, fog lamps or my auxiliary lamps and uh, that's pretty much it I already went ahead and you know installed new spark plugs you guys can see uh, you know what that looks like we have four so we already replaced those so now I'm just gonna put the fuel tank back on so anyways, in case you're wondering, as far as the wires, uh, I still have to, of course, connect this to the battery. So you could also see where I have, uh, what, what is this, my LP6? I think this is my LP6. I have it grounded on here, onto the frame. So, I mean, you could ground stuff on here. Uh, you could also ground it to your battery. You know, it's up to you. Uh, I'm, I'm thinking I'll probably ground this onto the battery. Or maybe I'll just ground it right here as well. Let me just put it over here on this one. In case you're wondering how this wires. I'll probably put it right here on this one. Just loosen this up and then put this bolt in there. This eyelet and then just crank it, you know, crank that down. And then of course connect this to my positive. I already have a ton of stuff. I'm not sure how many wires I have on that thing. I got quite a few. I think I already have quite a bit of wires. So anyways, that's pretty much it. Let's keep on. Uh, let's go ahead and put the fuel tank back on. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about the amp right here. As you can see, it is a it's a sealed unit, which is pretty unique. It's a weatherproof, seal proof, dust proof, vibration proof. There's a lot you know, there's a lot of the stuff to like about this uh, amp. Uh, it's fairly cheap, under two hundred and fifty bucks. You can find it on sale for two hundred dollars. I got a pretty good deal on it. Uh, it is a four channel amp. Do you have to use all the channels? No, you do not. Okay, it really depends on your setup. I'm using the four channels because I want to try out the speaker pods, the four inch speaker pods. You don't have to use that. You could tape them up, cap them up, uh, uh, heat, heat shrink them, and just forget about it. You don't have to use it. Uh, you could also bridge them as well, but I, I don't want to get into that because now we got to uh, change settings and then I got to explain how to wire them properly through the positive and the ground on the on the extra wire so you can see right here they they are capped i'm also pointing out that the uh, that the app itself you can see that you don't have those those open terminals like you typically do with most amps like i said this is a sealed unit not that bad and you can see right here as well i am showing you guys a little bit of what i have as far as the playlist when i'm mentioning you can check out these videos i have step-by-step -step videos for these installs for these speakers and they're in a separate video it's just that uh, due to time I don't know what you're installing on your bike I don't know what you're doing so instead of having you guys sit through all of this stuff you guys can you know just search it on the playlist so everybody's gonna be doing something different you're not gonna be using the same amp that I'm using you're not gonna be using the same speaker pods or, or you're gonna be using uh, the, the same size speakers Anyways, thanks for uh, watching the video. The rest of the video is just going to be me talking in camera uh, while I'm filming. So if you guys could please just leave a like on the video and, uh, you know, just leave a comment if it helps. Please check out the full playlist. If you have any questions, 
check out the playlist i have unboxings i have uh installs i have uh walkthroughs and you know, there's a couple of reasons where there's a couple of videos where I'm, I'm explaining things in just greater detail okay thanks for watching stay tuned for the rest of the video a lot more information all right so we just finished wiring the battery to the wires you guys remember this is the one for the uh stereo i don't have a fuse in it okay so it's it's a good idea not to put a fuse in it until you are ready to install because you might be cutting stuff soldering stuff and um it's just not a good idea okay especially when it's connected to the uh, battery now if it's not connected to the battery then you could leave the fuse in there it doesn't matter but once it's connected to the battery you should uh you know have that uh have that fuse out so uh anyways here's where i connected my wire like i mentioned i wonder i think this is my what is this is this my lp6 i think this is my lp6 and this is the um the uh, stereo system so i'm gonna have a zip tie just to kind of keep it away from the shock i'm gonna zip tie it probably to this or maybe i'll find something but i'm gonna zip tie this right here of course i'm gonna put a zip tie here and i'm gonna just run it right here through these bolts this is uh, where the adjuster used to be for the stock you guys see i have a fox shock uh and then this one i'll probably like i said i'll probably zip tie it here or who knows maybe i'll zip tie it to this maybe no i think i'm gonna just zip tie it right here to make sure it doesn't you know kind of like fall down because this is also you can see there's a little opening here maybe i'll zip tie it there just put it all the way through just to kind of hold it in place not too tight same thing on this one just to kind of hold it in place so that's where that's connected i'm going to put a, a 30 amp fuse in there and then the amp itself has a 40 amp so let's move on over here you guys can see that i've changed the connector i don't have a crimping a crimping tool for 10 gauge so i ended up uh destroying the uh the uh this connector i mean it's nice I would have preferred to have used this, but I just don't have one that goes up to 10, 10 gauge. So you can see the one I have is the max is 1416. So it just wasn't working out and I decided to scrap it and use these quick connectors. And you could also see that I went ahead and I heat shrinked the, uh, the connectors this is just to kind of seal them up, make sure that they're uh, weatherproof as much as possible. But uh, this will be underneath the uh, fairing so uh, you know this is gonna reach on over here and it's gonna connect the, the amps gonna be right here right on top this area so I still have enough slack uh, as far as the remote switch it is right here as well it's this wire right here so this is what's gonna be connected to the amp and this is what's gonna turn on when the bike turns on so everything's pretty much ready to ready to go now I just got to put the fairing back on and then connect the uh, connect the uh, the speakers in the in the fairing connect them to the amp because that's going to be one piece the amp the amp bracket and the speakers the the rockford fosgate speakers they're all going to go together so i'm going to just wire that in there put the amp sorry put the fairing on the the bracket and then all i have to do now is just wire three wires or sorry uh three wires and this connector that i have here these these are for the uh for the for the speaker pods all right i already mounted this i filmed this for tiktok i forgot to film it for the uh, youtube channel so i went ahead and put the fairing back over here so we can see that the bracket is already installed um i have five bolts in this thing to kind of hold it in place why i install the fairing this is the reason the reason why i did this is because i, I don't want to juggle the bracket the fairing and the bracket for the light all three items at the same time it's going to be difficult uh, i'm a one person show and uh, i don't have any help so yeah that's the reason why i went ahead and i drilled that and it just makes it easier for install and if i decide to remove it i'm not once again juggling three different items at the same time i could pull this piece out one you know with one hand so you can see it's all connected together the amp the amp bracket and the fairing and uh, the lp6 bracket so let's go ahead and look at the uh the speakers i don't know if the camera's gonna pick up it doesn't look like it's gonna pick it up but you can see the speakers are connected uh 
everything's pretty much connected except for of course the power the remote and the additional uh, speakers so uh, everything's pretty much heat shrinked uh, electrical tape you can see um, the uh, this is the uh, the main power for the uh, amp the yellow wire it has a 40 amp fuse in it you see that right there uh, now it's just a matter of managing all the wires so uh, I don't know if I'm going to have the included of the reason why I went with this. I believe I, I am going to have it on the YouTube, but same reasons, you know, you have a sturdier uh, bracket, you could put a bigger amp. This will not fit in this area right here. This is too, it's too wide and it's, and it's probably a little bit too thick for it to fit in here. So yeah, there's, there's no room for the amp to fit. So if you're putting on a bigger amp in your FXR T fairing, then, you know, this is a good option. You know, just go ahead, make a little bracket. I made it out of carbon fiber. You guys know the benefits. It's strong and it's light. Uh, it's also, you know, weatherproof. It's not going to rust. It's not going to do any of that stuff. Uh, you know, it's a solid piece. And, of course, the this area of the fairing, because it's a dominator, it's also made out of carbon fiber. So there's... You know, it's, it's it's pretty strong stuff, and I'm, I'm going to be very confident with the, the amp being in its place right here. So, it's, like I said, one piece. So, let's go ahead and install the, uh, the fairing, and we'll finally be able to listen to some tunes. Alright, so here it is. I've, been, I've wired up all the connections. I have the Bluetooth right here. This is not where it's going to stay, okay? This, I'm going to move it down here onto my... Uh, dash cover or block out block off cover whatever you want to call this so i am moving this here it has a little uh, housing unit so it, it sits recessed into the uh, cover so it's going to sound pretty good let's go ahead and turn it on and there it is you see that it, it is connected i already let's see if it plays let's let's just hit play and see what plays is it connected there we go. Uh, I'm not going to play the copyright music, but you could hear that uh, it is it is loud. Uh, I don't have a high pass filter or a low pass. I, I don't have the low pass filter uh, tweaked. I don't know. I'm still considering doing that just so I don't blow out these speakers. I'm not too sure if they can handle the the amps or or, or the wattage. I'm not too sure but it is yeah it is significantly loud and i like uh, having this little uh remote so this wire is really long but it works uh it connects instantly i like having the knob here you could lower it at red lights or when you're about to come home to the house so you don't you know piss off the neighbors or you could just pause it it'll pause of course and then you have your your volume right here as well volume value volume or volume <laughs> uh, you have it right here so you have seven you go all the way to the max but it is loud guys and of course we have the EQ presets nice and then of course you can skip back skip forward and we haven't even installed the uh, the towers the four inch ones so the amp has options let me turn this off the amp has options to go ahead and uh do a low pass filter on the four inch ones because it's three and four and we could do uh you know these are five and a quarter they might be able to handle some of that low frequency uh these speakers they are two in ones i i don't know but i mean we could you know we could turn on the low pass somewhere around uh 80 frequency so it, it just you know it blocks out all the all the bass uh you know uh, sound or maybe you could do uh, uh low low pass frequency on on your four inch and then just leave the uh the five and a quarter that way it plays a little bit of that bass bass was i saying bass or bass <laughs> uh bass bass we're not fishing um yeah, low. So you have on the amp, you have low in your high, and you have low, uh, low frequency filtering and high frequency filtering. So you have some options, and and they're set to three and four and one and two. So these are my one and twos, white and gray, and these are my my three and fours, green and purple. 
so yeah man i am excited to having some some music some tunes on this bike man i, I am uh, I, i'm really happy the way it's turned out I, I don't know you guys let me know in the comments about the four inch is this too much you guys let me know I, I, i'm just doing this so i could you know film the the install and film a review and probably do a comparison between uh these and the uh, four inch and then I'll, I'll get the uh the db meter and all that stuff so thanks for tuning in that's how you install speakers on an fxrt fairing i still have to bolt stuff up and i'm gonna clean up all the wiring i, I have a mess but uh like i said this is i'm still gonna be moving this all right you guys stay out there stay safe life's a risk get out there and ride later